Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen
with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, overcame death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life, grant that we who celebrate with joy the day of the Lord's resurrection may be raised from the death of our sin by your life-giving Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter began to speak to Cornelius and the other Gentiles. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good in healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I had, what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to Jesus, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. The word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The Gospel of the Lord. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Last year, during the second week of Easter season, I gathered, as I always do, with a dear group of colleagues who also have the privilege of leading large Episcopal congregations across the country. We had a fruitful time in Memphis, Tennessee, and I departed for the airport with several friends with my heart full, anticipating an easy return to San Antonio. Alas, it was not to be. I spent the afternoon watching flight after flight go from delayed to canceled. I was on a late enough flight and still filled with optimism, so I spent most of the day feeling sorry for those who were not going to make it out. My flight was delayed, but then finally we were able to board the plane. We were barely settled in our seats, having completed the dance of the overhead luggage bins, when we heard the dreaded announcement about possible mechanical difficulties. We had to leave the plane, but we were assured that we should remain in the gate area, because in no time at all we would be boarding the plane again. As the hours ticked by, my optimism fading, the flight was finally canceled. 
As a group, we made our way grumpily to the baggage claim area. I was on the phone as we waited, trying to book my flight for the next day. Having been play, placed on hold continuously, hung up several times on, I decided to stand in a long line in person to see when I could rebook my flight. After much clacking on the keyboard on a Thursday evening, I was told that I could expect to leave by Sunday or Monday at the earliest. If you were imagining that at this time I had lost any post-meaning glow, you would be correct. <laughs> Decided to rent a car online, only to arrive at the counter and be told that that had been an error. There were no rental cars available. I sighed deeply decided to take an Uber from the airport to a nearby hotel to just regroup and figure out what my plan was. It was dark. I was tired, I was not thinking straight, and I did not do anything except look for a hotel that had the word airport in the name. After being dropped off, I entered a smoke-filled lobby and I could tell that I had probably made yet another error in judgment. The person behind the counter was protected in plexiglass with a tape sign that read, no refunds. <laughs> Frankly, the only surprise was that there was also not a bed bug liability waiver also taped adjacent to it. Despite my mood, I decided to call another Uber, let go of that money, and vacate this reservation for another hotel. When the woman pulled up in the car to transport me to the next location, she looked me up and down and said, Lady, do you know what part of town you're in? When I saw your profile picture, I assumed you were a prostitute. Now I can see you are clearly in the wrong place. Get in the car and I'll get you out of here. Sometimes the obvious answer is not the one that contains the truth. We arrive this morning filled with hope and joy, and sometimes we forget that on this central day of our faith, it began in the darkness with exhaustion, grief, confusion, and a case of mistaken identity. Mary has gone to the tomb while it is still dark to seek something. We're not told her motivations. The body has already been anointed. So perhaps she just went to be near the gay grave of the one she loved. She arrives into her horror. She sees the stone has been removed. There is only one scenario possible. The body has been stolen. It is the only thing that makes any sense. She cannot face the desecrated tomb alone, so she goes back to find Peter and the beloved disciple. They run ahead of her to see what might have happened. And here is when the story begins to take a turn from the obvious answer to the remarkable, to the truth we can hardly dare to believe in. Not because it is impossible, but because it is the only truth that matters. The two men see linen wrappings carefully folded where the body has been. One does not go in, the other does. One believes, but the picture still doesn't capture the fullness of what is there, because the empty tomb is only the beginning of new life. The body has not been stolen, but resurrection and the journey to new life is rarely immediate. The two disciples return home, not by another road as the wise men did from the birth, but rather that well-trod road of familiarity and assumption. They gather with others who know him, waiting until dark again, when the upper room will be flooded with love and peace. Or maybe the fullness is known over breakfast, after a morning spent on the sea with their nets. But Mary stays. Having gained the courage to continue, she looks into the tomb and sees angels, seated one at the head and one at the foot where the body has been. 
They ask her why she is weeping. She said to them, they've taken away my Lord. I do not know where they have laid him. She turns and she sees Jesus standing there, but he does not look like what she expects to see. She is still in the world of Occam's razor. Her state of grief can only apprehend the easiest explanations. In one of the great lines of scripture we hear, supposing him to be the gardener. Her gaze is our gaze, seeing what we expect instead of what God hopes for us. Now I suppose, suspect when we, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him and I will take him away, she says. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turns and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni. In the hearing of her name, all her sadness and confusion falls away like unnecessary burial clothes. Before her is the one who knows her in a way that could only be God. She comes to herself held by the gaze of impossible love that has conquered death. And it is only in the moment of being seen that she finally is able to see not what is obvious or expected, but what is deeply true. She runs towards new life. I suspect we've all had our moments like Mary Magdalene. When we imagine our experiences of the living God, I doubt we first reached for doctrine or a statement of right belief. Those are deeply important, but most of us come to those only after we have already experienced the living God. They may be the clothing of our new life, but they are not the bodily form of love that has converted us. No, I suspect when we really talk about the moments in our faith that life that has changed everything, we name someone, someone who has called our name first before we recognize the Christ in them. Maybe it was a beloved Sunday school teacher or an adult in the choir who seemed wiser than our parents at the time. Maybe it was a grandparent or a neighbor who never failed to take delight in us. Maybe it was a camp counselor who took extra time to teach us how to swim or a dear friend who invited us to come to church when an old community had disappointed or harmed us. Maybe it's the kindness of a stranger who recognizes we are in danger despite all appearances to the contrary and helps us when we didn't even know we need it. There is a reason God risked everything by becoming smaller. God the limitless chose the finitude of a human body so we could see the body of love in ourselves and in one another. In the experience of that love, we then become bearers of love in the world by showing up, by seeing those who feel unseen or unworthy and asking them their names, by calling one another back to our truest nature as beloved children of God when the darkness has started to claim the victory. It is the first step of resurrection life it is why we gather together this day to remember that love casts out the power of death and leads us through to new life. We are asked to look beyond the obvious and seek a deeper truth. It is the truth that calls us by name. It tells us to have a different way of seeing the world. And then we leave able to act as the hands and feet of Christ from the smallest encounters to the bigger turns of our life. We are asked to take this moment of joy and recognition and translate it into an utterly different way of life. Resurrection is never mere resuscitation. Our tears remind us that the letting go is hard and grasping our old lives is not the way forward. But sometimes we initially go home and lock the door. We may need to wait a bit to receive that peace that passes understanding. It's okay. Christ will break down any barrier to get to us. Until we see as Christ does, and then suddenly a world that appeared to be full of gardeners is in fact suffused with the presence of the risen Christ. Easter is about that promise. We are known and loved by the risen Christ. 
We may not always be the first to recognize him, but when our eyes fail, someone will call our name and we will be reminded. Then together we can look at one another and say, I have seen the Lord. Alleluia. Amen. I invite you to stand as you are able, as with one voice and on behalf of the whole church, we make our creedal affirmation of faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, Maker of heaven, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God of God. Light from light, true God from true God, begotten one made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate in the Virgin of Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified, he suffered death, and was buried. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken with the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism and forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection and the life of the world. In the power of the resurrection, we pray for the church and for the world. Let us confidently bring our needs before God asking for renewal, saying, Risen Lord, hear our prayer. As we feast together this Easter day, give us a glimpse of your kingdom so that we might set our minds on things above in order to gain new perspective on the changes and chances of this world. Risen Lord, on this day of great celebration, in gratitude and great joy, we can recommit ourselves to work toward the unity of the church, that Christ's diverse body may be one as you are one. Risen Lord, we give you thanks for those who struggle for peace and justice in a broken world. And we pray especially for the leaders of all nations. Guide their efforts that they may act with wisdom and vision to plant the seeds of your kingdom on earth. Risen Lord, we give you thanks that Mary Magdalene found healing in her encounter with the risen Christ. Give wholeness and peace to all those who have asked for our prayers, especially those on our prayerish prayer list. Risen Lord, grant new life to those who feel unloved or forgotten, to the poor and the hungry, to those who are dying and those who grieve. Risen Lord, we remember before you those who have gone before us, especially those in whose memory Easter flowers are given. May we, like them, share in the fruits of the victory of Christ over the grave, the Paschal Lamb who has taken away the sins of the whole world. Risen Lord, Giver of life, we thank you for your great mysteries, the paradox of life from death and community from scattered disciples. We praise you for the dying which saves us from death and for the rising which brings us new life. And we offer you our prayers through Jesus Christ, the risen one, in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
May the peace of the Lord be always with you. so grateful that you are here. Whether you're gathered in person or online, please know the warmth of our welcome. If you're newer in the community and would like to have more information about how to get connected, we invite you to fill out a welcome card so we can be in touch with you about ways to get connected. On a day like today, I can mainly just be filled with gratitude and thanks for all the hundreds of people who have helped to make these services possible today. We give thanks for all of our musicians, for all of our guilds, including Altar Guild, who have been polishing silver and preparing things, for our readers, for our lectors, for our greeters, and for our staff. In particular, I want to lift up the staff that may be a little more hidden to you, our facility and kitchen staff, who are usually here long before most of us and leave long after, so great thanks to them as well. The one date I do want to make you aware of is a save the date for our vacation Bible school this summer. If you know of a young child that you would like to participate with us, we would love to have them, whether a member of the parish or not. It'll be June 10th through 14th uh, from 9 to noon, and the theme this year is called Call to Serve. So please think about children that you think would be welcome, and if you'd like to volunteer as an adult, please let us know that as well. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself as an offering and sacrifice to God.
But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again, he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling His death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer You these gifts. Sanctify them by Your Holy Spirit to be for Your people the body and blood of Your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in Him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And that the last day bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him, and with him, and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil. Thy This is the table of the Lord. It is made ready for those who love and for those who want to love more. So come, you who have much faith and you who have little, you who have been here often and you who have not been here long, you who have tried to follow and you who have fallen short, come, because it is the risen Christ who invites you. It is the risen Christ who wants to meet you here.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, You have graciously accepted us as living members of Your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And You have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of His body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage, love and serving, gladness and singleness of heart, in Christ. God the Father, by whose love Christ was raised from the dead, open to you who believe the gates of everlasting life. God the Son, who in bursting forth from the grave has won a glorious victory, give you joy as you share the Easter faith. God the Holy Spirit, who filled the disciples with the life of the risen Lord, empower you and fill you with Christ's peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia.